Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the previous video we have seen that this boolean expression is typically represented either in a sum of product form or in the product of sum form. And further we have seen that this SOP and the POS forms of expression can be classified in the two types that is canonical and the non-canonical. So in this video let us see how to convert the non-canonical form of expression into the canonical form. And first let us see how to convert the non-canonical SOP form of expression into the canonical form. So for simplicity first let us take the boolean expression with the two variables. So if you look this expression in the SOP form then it is in the non-canonical form. So here we can write this expression as a.1 plus b.1. So here in this first product form this variable b is missing while in this second product form the variable a is missing. So first of all let us add these missing variables in these two terms. So here in this first term we can write this one as b plus b bar right because we know that this b plus b bar is equal to one. That means here in this first term we can replace this one with b plus b bar. Similarly in the second term we can replace this one with a plus a bar because in the second term this variable a is missing. That means we can write this expression as a dot b plus b bar plus b dot a plus a bar and if we further simplify it then we will get this a dot b plus a dot b bar plus a dot b plus a bar dot b and here this a dot b term is coming two times. So let us write it only once. That means we can write this expression as a dot b plus a dot b bar plus a bar dot b. So now if you see each product term then it contains all the variables of the function. So now this expression is in the canonical form. So in this way we can convert any non-canonical SOP form of expression into the canonical form. So for the conversion, you just need to follow three simple steps. So first, include the missing terms in each product term. Then after, expand that expression. And then after, remove any redundant terms after the expansion. So to understand it more clearly, let us take few more examples. So in this example, this expression is also in the non-canonical form because here each product term does not contain all the variables of the function. So if you see this first term then in this first term the variables b and c are missing. So first let us include those variables and let us expand this term. So we can write this term as a dot b plus a dot b bar dot c plus c bar. And if we further simplify it, then we can write it as a dot b dot c plus a b dot c bar plus a dot b bar dot c plus a dot b bar dot c bar. So in this way, after the expansion of the a, we got four terms. Similarly, in the second term, the variable a is missing. So let us include that term. So after the inclusion, we can write this term as a dot b dot c plus a bar dot b dot c. Similarly, in this third term, the variable c is missing. So once we include this missing variable, then we can write this term as a dot b dot c plus c bar. And if we further simplify it, then we can write it as a dot b dot c plus a dot b dot c bar. So in this way, after expanding each term, we got total 8 terms. And out of the 8 terms, few terms are coming more than once. So let us remove all the redundant terms. So once we remove all those terms, then we have total 5 terms. And the output is the summation of all these terms. So as you can see, here each product term contains all the variables of the function. And therefore, this expression is in the canonical form. Moreover, here each product term is the mean term. So here, this mean term a dot b dot c 
corresponds to M7. Likewise, this A dot B bar dot C corresponds to M5. And similarly, this A dot B bar dot C corresponds to M4. Likewise, these two terms corresponds to M6 and M3. And the output is the summation of all these mean terms. So in an abbreviated form, it can also be written like this. That is the summation of all these mean terms. So in this way, we can convert any non-canonical SOP form of expression into the equivalent canonical form. So let us take one more example. So here, this function f2 is also in the non-canonical form. So in the first term, the variable c is missing. Similarly, in the second term, the variable a and b are missing. So in this way, we can add these two variables. And if we see the overall expression, then this is how we can add the missing variables. So if we expand it, then we will get this a dot b dot c plus a dot b dot c bar. Similarly, over here, we will get this a c plus a bar dot c dot b plus b bar. And if you further expand it, then we will get this a dot b dot c plus a dot b bar dot c plus a bar dot b dot c plus a bar dot b bar dot c. So in this way, we got total 6 terms. So out of the 6 terms, this term a dot b dot c is appearing 2 times. So we will consider it only once. So now if you see, then the function contains only 5 variables. So here, this a dot b dot c bar corresponds to m6, while this a dot b dot c corresponds to m7. Likewise, this a dot b bar dot c corresponds to m5, while these two terms corresponds to m3 and m1. That means the canonical form of expression is the summation of all these mean terms. And in a more abbreviated form, it can also be written like this. So in this way, we can convert any non-canonical SOP form of expression into the equivalent canonical form. So now, let us see the shortcut method for this conversion. And for that, once again let us take the same example. So here in the first term, the one variable is missing, while in the second term, the two variables are missing. So here what we will do, in place of the missing variable, we will write the x. That means we can write the first term as a dot b dot x while we can write the second term as this x dot x dot c. Now here in the each product term, if the variable is appearing in the true form, then we will consider its value as 1. And if it is appearing in the complemented form, then we will consider the value of that variable as 0. And we will keep this x as, as it is. So in the first case, we will have this 1 1 and x. Similarly, in the second case, we will have this x, x and 1. So now, first let us consider this 1, 1 x. So here, for this missing variable x, there are two possibilities. So when this x is equal to 0, then correspondingly, we will have this 1, 1, 0, which corresponds to mean term m6. And whenever this x is equal to 1, then that corresponds to mean term m7. Similarly over here, for the two unknowns, we have total four possibilities. And here are the corresponding main terms. And the output is the summation of all these main terms. So in this case, since the M7 is appearing two times, so it is considered only once. So this is the equivalent canonical SOP form. And if you see the equivalent POS form, then it will have all the numbers which is missing in this SOP form. So from the 0 to 7, the missing terms are 0, 2 and 4. So this is the equivalent canonical POS form. So in this way, using the shortcut method, we can easily expand the Boolean expression into the equivalent canonical form. So similarly, try to represent the following expression in the equivalent canonical SOP and the POS form. Alright, so now let us see how to convert the product of some form of expression into the equivalent canonical form. And for that, let us consider this expression which is given in the product of some form. 
but as you can see it is in the non canonical form because here the each sum term does not contain all the variables of the function so if you see the first term then here the missing variable is equal to c so now let us see how to include this variable c so we can add this variable c as c dot c bar because we know that in general this x dot x bar is equal to 0 that means even after adding this term the expression will remain the same and further using the distributive law we can expand this term so let's say this a plus b is equal to x so as per the distributive law we can write this term as x plus c dot x plus c bar and if we replace the x with a plus b then we will get these two terms similarly if you see the second term then here the missing variable is equal to b so we can add this missing variable as b dot b bar and further if we expand it using the distributive law then we will get the two terms that is a bar plus c plus b dot a bar plus c plus b bar so in this way after expanding these two terms we got total four terms and these four terms are the max term because each term contains all the variables of the function and the output is the product of all these max terms so these max terms are m4 m6 m0 and m1 so in abbreviated form it can also be written like this so this expression is in the canonical pos form and in the equivalent sop form it will have all the numbers which is not present in this pos form that is 2 3 5 and 7 so in this way we can convert any product of some form of expression in the canonical pos and the sop form so for this product of some form of expression let us see the shortcut method and let us understand how to convert the non canonical form of expression into the equivalent canonical form and for that once again let us take the same example so in this shortcut method first of all in each term whatever variable is missing just represent that variable with the x so in the first term we can write it as a plus b plus x while in the second term we can write it as a bar plus x plus c now in each term in the bracket if the variable is in the true form then consider that variable as 0 and if it is in the complemented form then consider the value of that variable as 1 and we will keep this x as as it is so this first term corresponds to the max terms 0 0 x while the second term corresponds to the max terms 1 x 0 so first let us consider this 0 0 x now as you have seen for the variable x there are two possibilities that is 0 and 1 so when this x is equal to 0 then the corresponding max term is equal to m0 and when this x is equal to 1 then the corresponding max term is equal to 1 similarly for this 1 x 0 when the x is equal to 0 then the corresponding max term is equal to m4 and when x is equal to 1 then the corresponding max term is equal to m6 so in this way after the expansion total four max terms are present in this canonical form and in abbreviated form it can be written like this so in this way using the shortcut method also we can find the equivalent canonical form from the given expression so to understand it more clearly let us take one more example so let's say we want to find the equivalent canonical pos form for the given expression and in this case we will follow the shortcut method so if you see the first term then here the one variable b is missing so we can write this expression as a plus x plus c plus d now here since the a c and the d are in the true form that means their value is equal to zero and we will keep this x as as it is now this x can have two values so when the x is equal to zero then the corresponding max term is equal to m0 and when this x is equal to 1 then the corresponding max term is equal to m4 that means once we expand this a plus c plus d 
then we will have the two max terms m0 and m4. Similarly, in this a bar plus b plus c bar, the one variable d is missing. So we can write it as a bar plus b plus c bar plus x. So here, since a bar and c bar are in the complemented form, so their value is equal to 1. And since the b is in the true form, that means its value is equal to 0. And we will write this x as, as it is. Now once again for this variable x, there are two possibilities. So when x is equal to 0, then the corresponding max term is equal to m10. And when this x is equal to 1, then the corresponding max term is equal to m11. That means after expanding this a bar plus b plus c bar, we will get the two max terms m10 and m11. Similarly, let us see this b bar plus c bar. So as you can see, here the two variables a and d are missing. So we can write it as x plus b bar plus c bar plus x. And here, since the b bar and c bar are in the complemented form, so their value is equal to 1. Now here, for the two unknown variables, there are total four possibilities. And correspondingly, we will have four max terms. And overall, if you see, then we will have total eight max terms. So the output function is the product of all these max terms. And as you can see, now this expression is in the canonical form. So if you see the equivalent SOP form, then it will have the numbers which is not present in this POS form. So between 0 to 15, these are the numbers or the corresponding main terms. And this is the equivalent SOP form of expression. So in this way, using this shortcut method also, we can convert any product of some form of expression into the equivalent canonical form. So similarly, try to expand this Boolean expression into the canonical POS and the SOP form. And let me know your answer in the comments. But I hope in this video, you understood how to convert any Boolean expression from the non-canonical to the canonical form. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.